Hey everyone! You've probably heard the term TNT tossed around in movies, video games, or even in history class. It's often linked with massive explosions, dramatic countdowns, and the kind of boom that makes the ground shake. But have you ever really thought about it? Is it just a generic term for anything explosive? Or is there a deeper story behind those three letters? Today we're going to break it down. What exactly is TNT? Where it came from, how it works, and why it became the gold standard for measuring explosive power. All of that and more right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. TNT stands for trinitrotoluene. Try saying that five times fast. It's a chemical compound that was first synthesized way back in 1863 by a German chemist named Julius Wilbrand. And fun fact, he didn't actually create it for blowing stuff up. TNT was originally used as a dye. Yup, a yellow dye. It didn't explode on runways, it colored clothing. But eventually chemists realized something fascinating. This stuff was really good at blowing up under the right conditions. So what is TNT chemically? It's made by taking toluene, a common liquid hydrocarbon, and adding three nitro groups to it. That's the tri-nitro part. These nitro groups are what give TNT its punch, chemically speaking. But here's the kicker. TNT is surprisingly stable. You can drop it, shake it, or even set it on fire, and it won't necessarily explode. This makes it much safer to handle compared to other explosives like nitroglycerin, which is notoriously sensitive. In fact, that stability is why TNT became such a go-to for military and industrial use. You don't want your bomb squad sweating over a crate of unstable goo. Now here's a common confusion. TNT is not dynamite. Despite what every cartoon or movie from the 80s told you, they are two different things. Dynamite was invented by Alfred Nobel, yes, the Nobel Prize guy, in 1867. And it's made by soaking nitroglycerin into an absorbent material like diatomaceous earth. Dynamite is much more sensitive and powerful in short bursts, but it degrades faster and is riskier to store. TNT, on the other hand, is more stable, easier to shape, and has a longer shelf life. So that red bundle with the sizzling fuse? Probably dynamite. But the military shell buried in the ground? That's almost certainly packed with TNT. So how does TNT actually explode? TNT needs a detonator to set it off. When detonated, it undergoes a very rapid chemical reaction called detonation. Yes, it's literally a detonation. The nitro groups decompose rapidly, releasing massive amounts of heat, gas, and pressure, all in a fraction of a second. That sudden expansion of gas is what we experience as an explosion. And TNT has a very specific energy release, about 4.6 megajoules per kilogram. That's a lot of energy packed into a tiny block. Oh, and by the way, TNT expands to over 1,000 times its original volume when it detonates. That's like going from the size of a soda can to an entire minivan in less than a second. TNT really became a major player during World War I and World War II. Why? Because it could be mass-produced, was relatively safe to handle, and didn't degrade quickly. It was used in artillery shells, bombs, grenades, landmines, you name it. And one other thing made TNT even more appealing to the military. It doesn't dissolve in water, so you could toss it into a lake and it would just sit there, waiting to be retrieved, or well, explode. In short, TNT was the Swiss Army knife of explosives, reliable, storable, and destructive. Here's something super interesting. TNT is also the measuring stick for other explosions. 
Ever hear someone say, that blast was the equivalent of 10 tons of TNT? That's because TNT is used as a standard unit of explosive energy. For example, the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was estimated at about 15 kilotons of TNT, which is 15,000 tons worth of trinitrotoluene energy. And today's nuclear weapons, some of them reach into the megaton range, millions of tons of TNT. This standardized measurement makes it easier to compare the power of different explosions, whether they're chemical, nuclear, or hypothetical asteroid impacts. But TNT isn't just for warfare or leveling enemy bunkers. It has civilian uses too, especially in construction, mining, and demolition. Need to carve a tunnel through solid rock? TNT's your guy. Need to demolish an old building in a controlled fashion? Yep, it can help with that too. However, in recent decades, TNT has slowly been replaced in civilian industries by safer and more environmentally friendly alternatives, like ANFO, ammonium nitrate fuel oil, or emulsions. These materials are easier to control and have fewer toxic byproducts. Still, TNT laid the groundwork, literally and figuratively, for the explosive tools we use today. Despite its usefulness, TNT has its flaws. First, it's toxic. Prolonged exposure can affect the liver and immune system, and workers exposed to TNT over long periods, especially during the World Wars, sometimes developed a condition called toxic jaundice, which literally turned their skin yellow. Yikes! Second, it leaves behind chemical residue in the environment. Soil near old military training areas can remain contaminated for decades. So while TNT might be stable during handling, its leftovers aren't exactly eco-friendly. It's a reminder that even powerful tools have a cost, especially when used on a massive scale. So what exactly is TNT? It's a man-made chemical compound created over 160 years ago, originally as a dye, that turned into one of the most important and widely used explosives in modern history. It's stable, powerful, and standardized, both a scientific benchmark and a cultural icon. It helps shape wars, build tunnels, and spark imaginations. And while it might not light up a fuse and go boom, like in the cartoons, its legacy is every bit as explosive. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.